you know, we've been talking about essentially how disease got involved in um, you know, the human cycle, essentially how disease adapted itself to um, emerging human civilization. I mean, we're, when we talk about weeding and we talk about flooding fields and all that, you know, we we're, were talking about essentially the things that, the little teeny tiny things that help make up a uh, civilized past. Um, and of course, too, still do. Um, so one of the things that we have to consider is essentially what are the diseases of civilization? Now, we're not going to go through a list of diseases of civilization. You could come up with quite a number of them. Um, but um, the key to uh, a list uh, or to a disease that's going to exist in a civilized world is the fact that the disease jumps from person to person. As I said in the last lecture, um, you know, essentially most likely diseases, at least early diseases, jump from something, you know, plant or uh, an animal or water or what have you, into uh, another human being, into a human being, or into an animal, and then into a human being. This coronavirus that we are looking at, um, it, it's made the leap from animals, undoubtedly, to humans, and now it's been able to make the leap from human, from one human to another. And that's really the sign of a civilized uh, disease. It's a sign of a, uh, a disease that has adapted to the way people live. Um, I watched uh, the other day as the president started to shake hands, then did shake hands, and you know, kind of backed off, and all that stuff. You know, we're used to shaking hands, uh, or a lot of um, my colleagues give people hugs. Uh, we, you know, we belong to a particular culture that does that. Um, and, you know, the end result, of course, is that's an excellent opportunity for a disease that has adapted to being civilized to jump from one person to the other. God help you for kiss. Um, so the, the whole thing is, is a civilized disease becomes a disease that can make it from one person to the other. Okay. Now, there's some little intricacies to this whole thing, too. And that uh, probably the most important of these intricacies is the fact that microparasites follow macroparasites. Um, that is, when you have raiding parties or when you have armies or things like that, um, you, get, um, you get disease. And why do you get disease? Well, first off, armies have people. People are interacting with other people, even if they're stabbing them. Horses, all kinds of things. Um, even in World War II, a lot of the transportation was horse-drawn, and that's something, we, you know, you don't see in movies, but it's, it happens to be true. Um, in the case of the bubonic plague, which we will talk about in several weeks, um, the plague itself followed raiders, um, and um, as it comes around from the Himalayas and up through Southeast Asia and up through Af through China um, and into the what are called the Russian steppes. Um, Mongols, the uh, Mongolian hordes, uh, the uh, great probably the greatest raiders in human history, um, would ride through these areas that had uh, picked up the bubonic plague from raiders, um, and then the raider the uh, disease would transfer to on to, the, to them and then the, the next thing you know you had disease in London uh, not brought there by the raiders but brought there by uh, people who had contact with the raiders and then who picked up the disease and then, then took it to London. Um, you know and, uh, warfare tends to break down things. Um, crops get destroyed. Houses get destroyed. Uh, so you got no crops and you know you starve. Um, houses, you're out in the open, not in the inclement weather, um, freeze to death, bake to death, you know, and, um, you know, bridges get knocked down. Um, and if you knock down bridges, you're sure not going to be transporting food, 
uh, and other needed products across them. So as a result, warfare tends to, you know, create, tends to carry disease with it, and then it creates the conditions under which a really good, happy disease will, will just multiply all the time. In the uh, after World War II, in the terrible um, situation of the winters of 1946, and particularly the terrible winter of 1947, uh, Europe was racked by disease. Um, and it wasn't because under normal circumstances there would have been uh, a lot of disease around, but it's because there was nothing left to Europe. Uh, the houses, the bridges, the crops, the electricity, everything, gone. Um, and so, um, as a result, a lot of Europeans died of disease who, if there hadn't been a war, would have probably lived another 20, 30, 40 years. And um, but that's not what happened. Um, yeah, and sometimes um, armies have been known to take advantage of the fact that they raid into these places uh, and provide uh, food for themselves. And when I say that, uh, uh, back in the 1600s, the French under Louis XIV, um, pretty relentlessly invaded Germany. Um, and Germany, um, well, they would fight back, but Germany was a very disorganized place in those days. And so the French would raid into what's called the Rhineland, which is where the river Rhine flows. Um, and they would leave, as they left, after raiding, um, the, uh, the German folk, uh, they, they, they would leave seed behind. Um, you know, you go plant crops now, and we'll be back next year and take those crops from you. In some strange way, and this is, this is how things work, uh, this actually worked out because the, the German farmers had seed so they could grow crops, and the French soldiers who were going to be back next year knew that they were going to have food, and so in some bizarre way, this system, this a balance broke out, and that's what happens. Um, you know, balances break out. If you don't have balance in your disease environment, the, the disease is going to kill too many hosts, and then it's just going to go away. And of course, uh, you know, DNA and whatever drives us to do the things we do. Um, Somehow another knows that. Um, and so, you know, I think I've told you about the rabbits of Australia who in 1950 were hit by a disease. And the first year, 99.8% of the rabbits were killed. That's way too much. Uh, no good disease wants that to happen, to have that many hosts die. Next year, 90% of the rabbits, surviving rabbits died. That's a little bit better. No, and by in about seven years, um, the disease the, the disease killed only twenty five percent of the uh, rabbits, uh, and so most rabbits survive and breed and you know create new baby rabbits, and the population goes back up, and the disease gets enough uh, gets enough hosts that it can survive uh, uh, quite a bit longer. So essentially. Disease is a matter of balance. Successful disease is a matter of balance. You're not going to get rid of disease. Not going to happen. Um, I don't care how many times you scrub your hands, you're not going to get rid of disease. Not happening. You can certainly diminish it, but you're not going to get rid of it. So what happens is, and, and this is the way uh, nature, our DNA works is we strike these balances. Um, diseases, civilized diseases, which transfer from one person to another, don't kill a lot of people, well, not a whole bunch of people. And um, so people live long enough that, um, and we get tougher, uh, so enough people live long enough to produce a whole bunch of uh, transfers of disease and you know, we shake hands. And gosh, isn't that wonderful? Uh, and uh, I'm sure every time one of us gives the other a hug, there's a disease somewhere that's saying, boy, I'd like to be part of that. Um, and so um, uh, that's kind of how things work. 
uh, the disease system, which we're not getting rid of ever. Um, the disease system simply works on balance. Uh, and the hallmark of a civilized disease, a disease that's suited for civilization, is that it simply is transferable from one person to another. But the disease does not kill off more people than the population can produce. And when that does happen, as in the bubonic plague, then two things happen. People adapt, and they're going to adapt to coronavirus right now. And the pathogen adapts. And the end result, therefore, is that you end up with a, a disease balance. Uh, and it works for everybody. Well, it works for everybody. It doesn't work. People feel awful, but it works for the disease. And frankly, you're not killed by it. Most people are not killed by uh, whatever pathogen we're talking about. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know if that's a cheery thought or not that some of, you, some of us are going to die from disease, but enough of us are going to live to keep the disease going. And that that's better than having everybody die. So kind of in its own way, kind of a hell of a statement, but that's, that's the way it is. Anyway, so thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.